Hello, I'm Joan Rettman, Area Community Relations at the Gardens at Town Square. Thank you for attending today's presentation, Medicare 101. Before we begin, I'd love to share a few words with you about the Gardens at Town Square, which is one of eight premier retirement communities owned and operated by Air Living, a locally owned and operated company of retirement communities for the past 34 years. The Gardens at Town Square is a lovely retirement community consisting of independent living with the ability to add assisted living services in the same apartment. The Gardens is really just the perfect size community with 142 apartments plus 26 private apartments within the terrace at the Gardens, which is our special memory care neighborhood. We are conveniently located near downtown Bellevue and just steps away from local favorites like the French Bakery, the Yellow's Mexican Restaurant, the Braeburn Shops, and the Bellevue Public Library. We are also just minutes from Bellevue Square and medical centers like Overlake and Kaiser. The Gardens is known for its feeling of independence and vibrancy, our relationship with the University of Washington and lifelong learning focus, its warm hospitality and lovely amenities, including one of the brightest and most cheerful dining venues around, plus a serene private garden courtyard, which really is our little oasis in the middle of the city. You'll find a wide variety of newly renovated apartments here, including studio, one bedroom, and two bedroom options. And now I'll introduce our speaker for today's event. We are so pleased to have Karen Nelson join us today to help us better understand the components to Medicare. Karen has worked in the Medicare industry since 2012 and has her life and disability insurance license in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Karen was an inaugural board member on the Humana Broker Advisory Council and is a member of the Senior Care Coalition, as well as multiple other senior advisory groups. So welcome, Karen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Joan. I appreciate that. Um, I welcome everybody. Uh, Joan asked me earlier how often, um, uh, how many times I've made this presentation and it's countless. <laughs> so it's a lot of information. I've done it a number of times. The joke is I can do it in my sleep um, and hopefully I don't completely overwhelm you, but I do provide you with as much information in our short little time frame. Um, I do tell people I do not know everything there is to know about Medicare, but a lot of times if I get a question that I can't answer, I do my darndest in order to reach out and uh, find that answer for you no matter what. Um, so what I'm going to do, I really like to do these um, talks by um, sharing my screen. Let me see if I'm able to do that. Wait, wait, wait. I think I might have it. How's that? Do you see oh. it now? It is working. Yes, we awesome. have it. Took me a minute. I apologize. For some reason, it just would not populate in the right space. Okay. So like I said, I like to go directly to the source. So who better than to go directly to Medicare to talk about Medicare? So uh, most of you um, should be getting this in the mail if unless you have your um, you know, you might be getting it online, but usually they send out a copy to every resident on Medicare, um, the new Medicare and you book. And it typically comes end of August, early September. So uh, if you haven't seen it yet, you can always reach out to Medicare and call them and they will be happy to send you a copy if you'd like to have a copy of the book. Um, so let's go ahead and start. I like to break it all down from the very beginning. So I like to talk about all the different parts to Medicare. So we have Medicare Part A. Um, it's very uh, simplistic just to say it's hospital coverage, but it also takes care of inpatient care while you're in the hospital, skilled nursing, hospice care, um, and there's some home health care benefits under Part A. And then you have Part B, which is medical, or I like to say doctors because it's a service from your doctors and other healthcare providers, outpatient care, there's home health care under Part B, durable medical equipment is billed under Part B, um, some medications are built under uh, Part B, uh, screenings, shots, uh, vaccinations, you can see the list right there of what's covered underneath Part, part B. And then you have part D and D is your drug coverage. So we're gonna break these things down and kind of talk about each of them. So 
Part A, when you first transition on to Medicare, when you're first eligible to Medicare, um, as long as you've worked 10 years or the equivalent of 40 quarters, you do not have to pay into Part A. You've already contributed while you've been paying your taxes while you've been working. So for most people, I don't like to say Part A is free because it's not. You paid for it, but you are not going to pay for it when you do get on to Medicare. But Part B, your Medicare Part B does come at a premium. You do have to pay a monthly cost to that. And that runs about $150 a month right now. Okay, that's kind of gone up through the years. Um, but currently we're sitting at ballpark around $150. So no matter what other insurance plan you were to put into place to go along with your Medicare, you will always have to pay that Part B premium. Um, it could be a little higher if your income is higher or if you are very low income and are receiving some state benefits some Medicaid benefits, you might not have to pay that Part B, but the average person pays about $150 a month into Medicare's Part B system. And then there's Part D. We're gonna get into a little bit more specifics on Part D, but Part D is your drug coverage. And you can get your drug coverage in a couple of different ways, but D for drugs. Okay, so that's part A, part B, and part D. So we're gonna go down a page here and kind of talk about the two of them and the different way to get you to use your Medicare options. So the very first is what is listed right here called original Medicare or uh, traditional Medicare. And that is when you have your Medicare A and your Medicare B card and then you get your Part D separate. You get a, what we re refer to as a standalone Part D plan. And then you can add a Medicare supplement or a Medigap plan. Same, um, same thing, just different words. We, unfortunately, there's a lot of confusion and that's part of it. Um, but when Medicare is your primary, both parts A and part B have deductibles in, in part A and part B. But if you put in place that insurance to go along with having your Medicare, you are um, more than likely going to have the insurance paying those deductibles for you, which is why we recommend you getting a Medigap plan or, as we're going to talk about here later, a Medicare Advantage plan or a part C. So when you have original Medicare and you have that Medicare card and you have a Medigap plan and your prescription drug plan separate, um, you could have 100% medical coverage, meaning Medicare would pay its allotted amount for a service. And depending on what level of Medigap plan you have, it could pick up the remaining costs that Medicare doesn't cover. So all those deductibles or um, most, most people are familiar with the 80-20 rule where Medicare pays 80% and the Medigap plan is gonna pay that 20, uh, the, the remaining um, 20%. So um, when you have this traditional route, it's a little bit more expensive because Medigap plans run on average right now in the state of Washington, they run about $200, give or take, depending on what plan you have. But when you have this strategy, as I said, Medicare is your primary. So when you have this, the rule is you can go anywhere anyone accepts Medicare. So all you have to do is say, do you take Medicare? Do you take Medicare assignment? And if so, you show them your Medicare card and then you show them your Medigap card and you can proceed and have your service, whatever it is that you need to have. If a doctor needs to um, send you for an MRI, guess what? You get to go have that MRI. You don't have any networks. And you don't have to ask any permission when you have this strategy. So again, you're going to pay a little more for it, but it gives you a lot of freedom. Uh, some of my folks that have this strategy really appreciate the fact that they can budget and they know at the end of the month how much their medical costs are going to be because they know it's going to be their premium. If they're in the hospital for a six week time frame, Medicare pays its allotted amount and that Medigap plan is going to come in and pay the remaining. So kind of a nice strategy for some folks. Now that Part D, I said we have to get that Part D separate, which we refer to as a standalone prescription drug plan um, or a PDP in our world. Um, so when you get your Part D, what's that gonna cost? Well, that's gonna depend on what kind of medications you're taking. So for folks that aren't taking any medications at all, the lowest 
cost prescription drug plan that we have currently for 2021 is about $6 and change. That premium's gone up a little bit. So in 2022, it's $7 and change. Um, but there's other plans that are available that may run you $15 or $20, $25. They could go up to $100. Most people on average are paying about $20 a month for their Part D uh, standalone prescription drug plan. Um, you're going to have co-pays with those plans. So just because you pay a premium doesn't mean that all your medications are going to be free. But how do we figure out which one it is we need? Well, like I said, if you're not taking any medications, you have an option to take that lower cost of plan. Um, maybe you're on a lot of medications. Well, we take the medications you're taking, we take the dosage, dosage and the frequency and put them into Medicare system. Medicare has an amazing website and that algorithm is gonna spit out and let us know based on what your needs are, what your best plan is gonna be for that following year. So this time frame, we'll, we'll talk about a little further, October 15th through December 7th, this is the time frame that you should be looking and saying, okay, these are my medications that I'm taking. What do those Part Ds look like for next year? Because those Part Ds, just like Medicare Part C, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, are contracted plans, and they run from January 1 to December 31st. And this time frame right now is the time frame that we're educating ourselves to look at what that picture that what our needs are going to be for the following year. So when you're on original Medicare, you definitely want to do your homework this time frame for your Part D, because this is the only opportunity you have to make a change to that Part D plan if you need to. Unless we can get a special election period. And again, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But for most people, this is the time frame to change that Part D. Now, Medigap plans, I've said that there's some varied um, plans with the Medigap plans. Well, I like to always share with folks that we are in a very unique situation here in the state of Washington. Our insurance commissioner is a firm believer of uh, having clients not spend or having uh, folks not spend more than they need to on certain insurance products. And Medicare is one of them. Our insurance commissioner um, encourages folks to shop around to make sure that you're getting um, the best price for your Medicare supplement or your Medigap plan. These plans are all federally mandated. So the plan that you're on, if you're on an F plan, F is in Frank, or if you're on a G plan as in Gopher, or whatever lettered plan you're on, they're federally mandated. So it's going to be the same no matter what that insurance carrier is. So if you're walking around with a card that says United Healthcare F, that F plan is going to be the exact same as somebody else who might be walking around with one that says United of Omaha F. The F is the same. The difference is who your insurance carrier is and how much you're spending on that plan. So we are the only state in the US that allows someone to change a Medigap plan anytime they want to during the year. It doesn't have to be this time frame. So if you wanted to shop around and see if you could save some money, you can do that anytime you want to when you have original Medicare and a Medigap plan, okay? I'm gonna stop right there and see if there's any questions on that before I move forward. And see if anybody's gonna pop anything into the chat or maybe anyone has any questions. Do we look good, Joan? I think we're good. Yes, nothing okay. popping up in the chat quite okay. yet. Okay. When you have this strategy, like I said, this is a little bit more expensive, but you do have the freedoms. You don't have a network. You don't have to ask permission. No one is calling to get an authorization to have a service done. Um, if you were to travel to Arizona, this plan here in Washington, your Medigap plan and your Part D is going to work the same in Arizona as it does here in Washington or any other of the states. If you were to travel out of country, no matter what Medicare plan you opt for, we always recommend that you get travel insurance when you're outside of the country. Even though there's a Medigap plan that says it has emergency foreign travel, I still encourage all of my clients to make sure that they get some travel insurance if they go outside of the country. So when you have original Medicare and your GAP and your Part D, you didn't hear me say anything about a dental plan. Well, because there is no dental when you have this particular strategy. So your premiums are going to be higher and you're going to have to shop and get a dental plan separate if that's what it is that you need. 
So which really brings me to talking about Medicare Advantage plans, or as somebody has decided that A and B and D together equal C. <laughs> so let's talk about Medicare Advantage plans or Part C. So these plans are uh, private plans done by the individual insurance companies. And this is a time frame of year where we see all those commercials where um, they all talk about all these great benefits that somebody might have and a zero dollars and look at all of these good things that you could have if you come over to us or another carrier is going to say, oh, come over to us because we offer these things. Well, let's talk about what these plans are. So Medicare Advantage plans are, they can be uh, HMOs or PPOs here in the state of Washington, health maintenance organization and preferred provider organization. These are network-based plans, okay? So let's talk about the difference between the two. HMO, health maintenance organization, basically says that you have a network in which you need to stay in to see all your providers. And the insurance company is gonna help you keep your costs down low if you stay in that network. But on an HMO, if you go outside of your network, you will have to pay 100% of your cost. So it really behooves you to make sure that you see uh, physicians and utilize your plan in network. PPOs, a preferred provider organization, is a plan where you're going to have really good coverage while you're in your network. So your th everything, all your services are going to be at low dollars inside of network. And you are going to have some sort of coverage outside of network, but you're going to pay more when you go outside of network versus being inside your network. Okay. But both of which being um, uh, networked plans and each being these Medicare Advantage plans, whether it's an HMO or a PPO, your individual insurance company is managing your Medicare. So whereas on original Medicare, we said Medicare was your primary. If that was a medically needed service, Medicare pays its allotted amount and your Medigap comes in and pays the remaining. In this case with Part C, Medicare Advantage, it's the individual insurance company that is managing your Medicare, okay? So uh, the, the um, you are going to have to have some authorizations when you have uh, Part C. Now, no one's going to tell you you can't have the service, but there might be a slight delay while somebody is making sure that whatever that service is that you're going to have done is going to be approved by the insurance company, okay? Medicare Advantage are... I like to say pay as you go type of plans. Whereas we said a Medigap plan on average, folks are paying about $200 a month. Medicare Advantage plans, some of them can be $0 a month. We see lots of those commercials. Um, don't have a premium up front and look at all these wonderful things that we're gonna give you. And there's a lot of validity to that. So Medicare Advantage plans typically are very low in cost up front. And then you'll pay as you use that plan. So you may have a copay when you go see your doctor. Your copay to see a specialist is going to be a little higher. You might have cost share when you have an MRI done. Um, variety of services that you might have, you might have to pay something toward those services. But what a lot of folks really appreciate is they're not paying a lot of money up front for these plans. Okay. So um, there are some really great plans that really truly are a zero dollar upfront, but the key is to know that as you're using this plan, you are going to have some bills coming toward you because you are going to have to pay towards service. But Medicare Advantage plans um, will have some of those extra benefits, like we talked about dental. Um, a lot of these plans will have dental, they'll have some vision benefits, uh, they may have chiropractic or acupuncture or transportation. There's a variety of different things that they can offer. They all have to do things within Medicare's guidelines for the basic services that they offer. But again, because they are done by the private insurance company, they all want your business. And how are they going to do that? They're going to offer you some extras to try to get you to utilize the plan. Now, Medicare Advantage plans change every single year. So just as I said with those um, Part Ds, right, they're a contracted plan. Medicare Advantage are a contracted plan as well. They run from January 1 to December 31st. And so we can get into the contract when we're turning 65 or we're retiring. So mid-year, you can get into the plan. 
and you will um, you have an opportunity to come out of that plan when during this time frame, this annual enrollment time frame. So October fifteenth through December seventh is that window to kind of take a look at what your needs are. Look at where your medications are, look at where it is that you're seeing a doctor and check out some of those extra benefits and you might wanna make a change to your plan. This is a time frame to do that. Now, um, and any change that's made there is gonna take effect for January 1, okay? And we'll talk a little bit more about some other time windows to change plans. But um, Medicare Advantage plans, again, they're contracted plans, okay? So you got to pay attention to whether or not you have that HMO or you have the PPO. And you kind of need to know what, um, you know, what does this plan do for me and where are my out-of-pockets going to be? Now, when I'm trying to help determine what type of Medicare Advantage plan might be really good for somebody, um, there's a lot of factors that we look at. One of which, as I said, what does your doctor accept? These are the types of plans that you do need to find out of the doctor. Do you accept my plan? Because you still have Medicare, but in this plan, you're being, it's being managed by the individual insurance company. So you need to make sure, do you accept my United Healthcare plan or do you accept my HMO with Aetna? Whatever that carrier is, you just gotta make sure your provider accepts it. So I'm looking at, okay, who's your provider? I got to find out which uh, plans that your provider is going to accept. And then I need to look at um, the co-pays that are inside the plan, because just because one carrier has a zero premium plan and another carrier has a zero premium plan doesn't mean that the co-pays when you use the plan are all going to be the same. So we kind of look at what the what I say utilization is. If I needed to go have services done, what's that going to cost me depending on which plan it is I'm, I'm choosing? And then we have to look at the formulary. So a formulary talks about the level in which your medications are on the plan. So just like a standalone prescription drug plan, I've got to do the same thing on a Medicare Advantage plan and put your medications in the system and find out which Medicare Advantage plan is going to do the best job for your medications because no one wants to spend more money on their drugs than they have to. So that's another really big factor. We've got some really great companies with some really good plans and some very, very good coverage, but not all formularies are the same. So there are sometimes I kind of want somebody to be on a particular plan because of some of the benefits they have. But if their medications are too expensive on that plan, then I explain to them that that's just not the right plan for them. Okay. Um, formularies, uh, like I said, formularies is a way that we earmark your medications to cost they are on a tier system. It runs tier one through five. And so tier one and tier two medications are your generics and your preferred generics. And tier three, fours, and fives are your more expensive medications. Most Medicare Advantage plans um, all say that if you have a deductible with your Part D on that Medicare Advantage plan, that deductible is gonna speak to those more expensive medications, the three, four, and five. And that holds true with most all the standalone prescription drug plans as well. So um, for a lot of people, if you're only taking generic medications and then all of a sudden, for some reason, you got put on an expensive medication, a lot of times you have to meet that deductible before you get to that copay for that particular medication. I don't want to confuse you too much on that, but, um, but it is really important to know what medications you're taking and what tier levels that they are. So like I said, these plans will have those extra benefits. It's very enticing for a lot of people to have a zero premium plan or they're not having to make a premium payment every single month and have a plan where um, their co-pays are all real low. In a lot of cases with a lot of plans, especially coming up in 2022, we're seeing a lot of plans that are having a zero copay to go see your primary doctor. And the reason for that is they want to encourage you to go see the doctor. Nobody wants to put a very heavy premium on you to discourage you to go see your primary. These plans offer preventative services at zero copay. So go in and get those mammograms and your colonoscopy and any other preventative services. Those are all going to be at a zero cost. Again, zero up front, zero to go see your primary, zero for these preventatives. Can you see that this is a very enticing way to get your coverage? And then they're going to add in, like I said, some vision, some hearing, and some dental services. Those are going to vary on the plan. 
So just because you had a Humana plan one year with certain benefits doesn't mean that those benefits will be the same the next year with Humana, or doesn't mean that the those plan or those benefits that you're receiving are be the same if you use, say, Aetna or United Healthcare. Okay, they're always going to be a little different. And again, this is that time frame where we want to look at each of the plans and say, okay, which plans are doing what? Where are those differences? What does that look like for me for next year? Plans change every single year. Prescription drug plans change and the Medicare Part C's change. And sometimes we get new plans, something that was never even offered the year before. All of a sudden, that will show up. <laughs> and that's kind of a nice thing, especially when you see some of these really, I always say people laugh at me when I refer to them as pretty plans, <laughs> because some of them can be very pretty. So um, let's talk, let, let me stop right here, see if there's anybody that has any questions on Medicare Part C. Not seeing any questions come in through chat, but maybe what we could do, since it's not uh, too large of a group, if someone does have a question they'd prefer to ask directly, you could temporarily take yourself off mute, maybe, to ask the question to you, Karen? Yeah, absolutely. I want to make sure that we're all on the same page, so please feel free to unmute yourself if you do have a question. Uh, there is one question that did pop up in okay. chat. The question is, where can people go to find out their medication tier? Oh, so you can, um, so every carrier has, they change that formulary every single year. You can either go to Medicare's website, put your medication in there, and it'll populate with the plan that you have. It'll show what your tier level is. You can always call the insurance company and ask them directly. Um, Carriers do send out literature, a lot of it. Sometimes it becomes a little confusing, but they tend to send out information on the tier levels as well. Um, your best recourse to me is always call up the insurance carrier or um, now the pharmacist won't know that answer. I was gonna say check with your pharmacist, but they won't know that answer. Um, the insurance carrier, if you're questioning what level the medication that you're on right now, you could reach out directly to the insurance carrier. Or if you have an agent, you can have your agent look that up for you. Thanks, Karen. We have another question. Is there a compelling reason to choose original or advantage? Ooh, that is a really good question. Okay. Um, yes. So when I'm working with someone, typically, um, if I find somebody who's extremely medi, what I refer to as medi needy, if they are using their insurance a lot, they're in and out of the hospital a lot, have a very heavy diagnosis, um, some of my clients that are older in age that have become fall risks, um, the benefit is very easy to go in and out of doctor's offices, in and out of the hospital. Uh, it's very beneficial if you're in skilled nursing. So some clients, it's pretty much, uh, I, I, as we're talking about what their needs are, we can kind of see that having original, original Medicare is a, a really good option for them, though it is expensive. So cost sometimes is really an issue. For some folks, we just look at the finances and know that trying to pull together those higher premiums is really, really tough. So in that case, it's let's find the strongest Medicare Advantage plan that will work for them. Is that that better bet? Um, if I have a client who's doing a lot of traveling, they're going from one state to another, a lot of folks really appreciate having that original Medicare, because again, it's going to work the same in all the different states. Although I do have to say that as um, these plans are ever evolving from one year to another, we actually, the Medicare Advantage plans are county based, so they're based where it is that you live. And in King County, we're actually starting to see more and more, more PPOs come up. So remember that preferred provider organization where you have in-network and out-of-network coverage, we're starting to see some really strong PPO plans come in. And so that travel component where usually we used to steer people toward original Medicare, there's some really good PPO options. So some folks are starting to choose that instead of um, original Medicare. It's very situational. Um, sometimes it's peace of mind. I do have some folks that say it just makes me feel more comfortable knowing that I have that 100% medical coverage if I choose original Medicare. So it is very different per person. Um, does that help? Did that answer the question well enough? I'll see if there's a response that comes back in 
okay. to chat. I do okay. have a follow-up question while we're seeing if there's an additional comment there. Uh, with, so ma with so many people that we work with that do have a need for skilled nursing at some point, maybe following a, a surgery or a health event where somebody, of course, starts out in the hospital and then needs rehab for a little bit. Um, you had mentioned there are some differences between the two plans for skilled yeah. nursing. I wonder if you could elaborate on that a little bit more. Sure. Absolutely. So um, when you're on a, a Part C plan, the first 20 days that you're in a skilled is covered at a zero copay. Okay, so days one through 20 and skilled. Remember, we said that when you're receiving services on a Part C plan, you have cost share. And so the first 20 days, there is no cost share, but day 21 moving forward, there is cost share to the to uh, being in a skilled. And that's that amount is going to vary between plans. So um, cost wise about uh, I want to say about $160, $170 per day you could be spending. And so that can add up. So for one thing, for some folks, um, I have had it happen before where people think that the skilled nursing is trying to kick them out at the end of the three week. Well, they're not trying to kick you out. They're just trying to let you know that you might have that copay coming at you. And for some folks that um, are, again, medically needy and have that potential of being in and out of skilled a lot, those costs can really add up because you can imagine if that monthly cost for that Medigap plan is about ballpark $200. And you've now been in skilled for, say, you know, well, we've been there past the 21 day mark, and now I'm having to pay, you know, close to $200 a day to be in skilled, those dollars start to really add up, right? Does that make sense? So in that case, those are those time frames when I'm seeing somebody, and you try to catch it beforehand, you can't always do it which is why I wanna kind of talk a little bit about the, um, once we move on from this, I'll talk about the different timeframes that we can change plans because um, sometimes we can catch things beforehand. Sometimes we have to kind of look at it as they're happening. Does that help, Joan? It does, thank you for clarifying that. Um, one other quick question and we'll let you continue on with your uh, additional points. So um, what percentage of people would you guess choose original and what percent choose advantage? Oh, you know, that's a very, very tough question. It's certainly with my book of business and the clients that I work with, it is certainly not a 50 50. Um, and I will say more and more folks are leaning toward those Medicare Advantage plans. And I think that the reason why is because of cost. The cost of Medigap plans keeps really going up. So folks start tending to look at what they keep paying each month for those premiums. And the Medicare Advantage plans are, um, as the years have progressed, have become stronger, uh, more coverage, less out-of-pocket costs for folks. So um, I don't know that I can give you an answer on the percentage. I do appreciate the fact that there's a difference, that we do have options in the world of Medicare. Um, you know, when you're in a work situation or anyone who's on the um, Affordable Care Act, they have PPOs. So you don't get a choice to have 100% medical coverage. Lots of people would like, you just give me that premium amount that I'd have to pay once a month, more than happy to do that and have everything covered. So um, I definitely really like the fact that we have options. And just because you choose something once doesn't mean that's what you have to stay on forever and ever and ever. Lots of times we find people making a, a choice in one direction and then making a change one year. And sometimes they go back to what they had in the first place, but you have option to do that in the world of Medicare, which is really, really nice. Okay, thanks, Karen. Yeah, so I saw another, oh, that was the question, the percentage. Yeah, I'd have to go back through and look at, at mine and see if I can give you a percentage. I, I, I don't know. But more and more folks that are transitioning onto Medicare these days, I've had more clients um, that have opted for the Medicare Advantage. Um, now that I think about it, I did. I have a, a referral partner I worked with last night, her and her husband, and they're moving. And so that's also another thing that might make you choose one versus another. So the area in which they're moving, the, there's only one Medicare Advantage carrier that's offered in the area in which they live. And so um, they don't have a lot of choice and where they want to be able to participate to see doctors, that particular plan is not accepted where they see their provider. So that means that we're looking at doing an original Medicare plan and a Medigap plan for them when they move. So that can make a difference as well. It's where, where it is you live and what's offered. 
So let's talk about the time frames because to me that is such an important aspect to getting some education on, on Medicare. Um, right now we are in the world of AEP, the annual enrollment period. And that runs from October 15th through December 7th. And that's that window that you can change your plan as many times as you want to. You can decide to change your drug plan over and maybe go do an application for a Part C. And then, oh, no, I don't want that Part C. I want this one. And, oh, I know I think I really do want to stay on original Medicare. You can change that plan as many times as you want to. But the very last thing that Medicare sees in the system for you at midnight on December 7th is the plan that will be in, in effect for you January one. Okay, so that's really important. You can change it all you want to. This is the time of year that I really emphasize to people, educate yourself, educate yourself on what plan it is that you have, what your needs are, and, and, and make that choice. Either, yes, it makes sense for me to stay right where I am, or no, I see something that's uh, um, going to give me better coverage or might save me money at the end of the day. Educate. That's that to me, that's the most important thing. Now, AEP, October 15th through December 7th, we also have an opportunity in the month of January, February, and March, we have a time frame called OEP, and that's the open enrollment period. Now, that doesn't speak to prescription drug plans. The OEP speaks to Medicare Advantage plans or Part C. So folks in during that time window, those first three months have an opportunity to either change their Medicare Advantage plan to a different Medicare Advantage plan, okay, or switch over to original Medicare with a standalone prescription drug plan if that's what they choose. So during that first three months, you have a window when you're on a Medicare Advantage plan to make a change if you choose. Now, why would you do that? Well, maybe you opted for that Medicare Advantage plan to all of a sudden now you've got this diagnosis or something serious has happened and you recognize that I really want to have original Medicare with some stronger medical coverage. Then you have that opportunity to do that with no questions asked. You get to switch over. Or maybe you were on a Medicare Advantage plan and you didn't realize that maybe there was another carrier that had some benefits that you want to be able to utilize. So you have that one time opportunity to change it over. So um, again, your Part D has to be done during AEP. But when you're on Medicare Advantage, you've got AEP to make a change. October 15th through December 7th, that plan will change for January 1 for you. But if you change that plan in that Medicare Advantage plan in January, the change will be made for you for February 1. Or if you do that in February, it'll be made for you in uh, March 1st. Okay. And if you change it in March, it'll be moved forward for April 1st. So you have two different time windows when you're on Medicare Advantage to make a change. So I always tell people, don't fret. If you didn't do it during AEP, you have another opportunity at the beginning of the year. So I also mentioned an SEP, a special election period. And a special election period is also, it's another opportunity to make a change to your plan, whatever the plan is. If we can trigger what's called a, a special election period or an SEP, then you can make your, you can do a plan change in the middle of the year. And there are certain SEPs that are very valuable to folks. One of which, of course, if you're moving, if you're moving from uh, one uh, place to another and the plan that you're currently on is not accepted in the place that you're moving to, then you have that special election period that you can make a change to. Uh, we mentioned skilled nursing. Here's something that's really important. A lot of people don't know this, but if something's to happen, you're in the hospital and now I've had to transition into a skilled nursing and you're in that skilled nursing for a time frame, you have two months after coming out of that skilled nursing, you have a two month window to change your plan. You have a special election period coming out of that skilled nursing. Now, why would you need that? A lot of times if you're going into the hospital and you've had something happen that's now had you go into skilled nursing, a lot of times your medications can change or obviously your health situation is now different. Medicare gives you that opportunity to make a change to your plan if you so choose that you need to do so, okay? Um, there is a special election period for a lot of folks um, that live in certain long-term care uh, communities. So there are certain ones that actually offer certain services that will allow me to make a change to anyone's plan. So anyone who lives in an adult family home, 
I always have availability to change their plan anytime I need to during the year. That gives them an, an, an automatic special election period. So certain communities, I like to tell folks, no matter the situation, if you think that you need to make a change, call and ask. If there's a window of opportunity to make that change, we're gonna make it. Otherwise, you're gonna know that next chance that you have to get that plan changed if you need to, okay? Does that make sense? It's an awful lot of information that I have given everybody. Let me look and see. Nope, I'm not going to worry about these next pages here. So we talked about the breakdown of what Medicare Part A and Part B is. We talked about what Part D is. We talked about the fact that Part D and Medicare Part C plans are contractual. Um, we've talked about the differences between original Medicare and what a Medicare um, Advantage plan is. And we talked about a lot of the uh, of different uh, timeframes and the windows in which to change your plan or why it would be beneficial for you to take a look and change your plan. Do we have any questions? Because that was a lot. <laughs> Great information, Karen. We'll pause for a second to see if other questions come in through chat. Okay. Uh, again, you're also welcome if it's difficult for you to use chat or you're just more comfortable, you are welcome to take your microphones off mute at this time to ask Karen the question directly. I like a good Q&A, so. <laughs> Very quiet group. <laughs> yes. Um, and a question again about just thinking about a, a number of people that do relocate from one state to the next. Are there are there any other um, pieces of advice that you think, other than um, you gave the example where someone was moving into an area where there weren't very many um, options, so that would be one reason to choose the original. But are there other considerations that you think would be good for people to keep in mind for out of state relocation? So when they come over. So one thing I do get phone calls on occasion from people that are moving into communities where they have a doctor who comes into the community rather than them needing to go out to go see a physician. And um, it's really important to make sure that you're on the right plan that that physician that comes in house to you accepts whatever it is, you know, what your, your plan is. Um, there are some physicians out there that only take, they only accept original Medicare and that Medigap plan. And then there's others that are, that, that do contract with some of the Medicare Advantage plans. So that's really important. Um, I think that it's, a, I love the concept of having some of these in-house physicians that will come into the senior communities. Um, and I think it's a, a good value for people to utilize that. You just have to make sure that your, um, you know, your plan is accepted, that, that you're able to do that. So when you're moving in and out, you wanna make sure that that's a factor that you look at. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, we did cover a lot of great information. And of course, some of your questions might come to mind later. You're always welcome to email those questions to me if you'd like, and I'll make sure those questions get to Karen and then get back to you with the answer to that too. So Absolutely. thanks again, Karen. That's yes. super informative. I always learn something new when I hear you talk. So thanks so much. <laughs> you guys a lot of great information today. Um, and so what we'll do next is following today's presentation, we'll send you an email just asking for some feedback on the presentation. That's also an opportunity for you to ask additional questions that way if you'd like. Uh, of course, if you have any questions specific to the gardens at Town Square, you're welcome to reach out to me directly on those. Again, either by responding to the email that I'll be sending you today, or you can give me a call here at the gardens at 425-688-1900. So again, thank you so much, uh, Karen. We appreciate everything that you did for us today. It was a great presentation and have a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks so much. Excellent, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye, Joan, nice to see you. Bye. Thank you too. <laughs>